Dracula was a 1931 movie in Spanish. Uh, there's actually an original with Bela Lugosi that everybody knows and loves from the 1930s. Well, they also made a Spanish version of the same film. I've been meaning to watch it for the longest time, but I guess I've been kind of scared because my, you know, two semesters of Spanish in high school were not really preparing me for all the words I would have to kind of follow along in this movie. And, you know, some of the basic stuff I could follow, like, Buenos noches, swim film. Okay, I got that part, but I mean, a lot of it I just had to kind of follow the subtitles. It reminded me a lot of watching Akira Kurosawa movies back in the day, where I had to do a lot of subtitle reading, because honestly, I don't speak Japanese and I barely speak any Spanish either. All that to say, though, is this is a really cool production of Dracula. The film looks great, it's well acted, and even though it doesn't have Bela Lugosi, it does have a reasonably convincing actor playing the lead. The actors were Carlos Belarius, who plays Conde Dracula. They had Lupita Tovar as Eva Stewart, Barry Norton as Juan Harker, Pablo Rubio played Renfeld, and Eduardo Arozama played Van Helsing. And all of them did a really good job. I was really impressed with the production. The sets looked good. The acting was good. And the lead actor, this uh, Carlos Valerias, does a nice job in the Bela Lugosi role. Now, of course, I would prefer Bela Lugosi, but this guy was great, you know. Didn't understand a word of what he was saying most of the time. But, I mean, really, it's Dracula. Do we need to really understand exactly? I mean, we can kind of tell what's going to happen. Kind of follow the story, even if we can't necessarily understand what they're saying at any point. So the story is pretty much the same. There's Renfeld at the beginning of the movie. He's riding in the carriage into Transylvania. He meets the Count. The Count serves him dinner. And, you know, it's everything is almost scene for scene the same as Dracula, the Bela Lugosi version. You know, down to the details like, you know, Renfeld cuts his finger and you see Dracula, kind of his eyes light up and he wants to move in and stuff. And... You know, there's minimal difference between the two. So, you know, the story, Renfeld eats his dinner, he gets drugged, he passes out, Dracula, you know, turns him into one of his slaves. And then the two of them travel on a boat over to England. And during the course of the passage, they, of course, pick off the entire crew. Now, they did not have the same scene that I thought was excellent with the Renfeld character as played by Dwight Fry where he makes that crazy look as he's coming out from the bottom of the, the boat. Uh, but he still does a great job. This actor who played Renfield was really convincing as playing just the stark, raving, mad lunatic. It was Pablo Rubio. And I'll be honest, I don't know any of these actors from anything, but he did a great job. You know, the screaming, the maniacal laughter, the, you know, just the frantic, crazed, you know, all of his actions were just very, very well done, you know. Trying to follow his acting while also reading the subtitles at the same time. It's a little bit of a challenge, but, it, you know, whatever. And he did great film. They, so they show up in England, and then you know the story. They, he goes to the opera, and then he gets to meet some of his neighbors, and he takes a bite out of um, Ava Seward. And, of course, they call in Van Helsing, who was played here by Eduardo Arozama, and he was good. Wasn't quite as great as, say, the, like Edward Van Sloan, but he still has, like, the thick glasses, and he's still the believer in the supernatural. Something creepy is going on here. So without going into too much more detail, I mean, you know the story. Uh, Van Helsing, he's on to Dracula's gimmick. He captures him in a, a mirror where he can't be reflected, and he shows it to Dracula, and Dracula freaks out. So, you know, Dracula knows what's going on. And I'm calling him Dracula, but it was actually Conde Dracula. So, and the story's pretty much the same. You know, there's the big conclusion down in the tomb and the coffin and so on. This one's really worth checking out. You know, I was really surprised. I thought it wouldn't be quite the same level of enjoyable as the Bela Lugosi Dracula, but actually it is. It's a very fun and very well-made movie. And in researching the film, I thought it was interesting that this was a film that I guess it vanished, and it was only recently found in the 1970s, and then Universal, I guess, packaged it up and released it with some of their other uh, films, so 
It's good stuff. If you can find a copy of it, this one is worth checking out. It's the 1931 Spanish version of Dracula.